All right, so we're gonna talk about ratios. In Mr. Neely's pet shop, we have a ratio of frogs to cats represented by this picture. What is the ratio of frogs to cats? Well, you make sure you always put the frog first if it's said first. So we write a ratio in three different ways. The number of frogs is one to the number of cats, which is five. We can write a ratio with a colon, we can also write a ratio with the word two in it, or we can write it to look like a fraction, but it's still pronounced one to five, not one fifth. We also use this to make equivalent ratios. Like if I say, well, I know the ratio is one to five, but when I called Mr. Neely to ask how many frogs he had, he said he had two frogs. Well. And then you have to wonder, without calling him back, how could you find out how many cats he has? That's easy. If he had two frogs, we put the two across from where the two belongs right here with the fraction. I usually use the fraction when I do this. And then I multiply the number one in some way to get to the two. So the top is one frog to two frogs. How do we get one to become two? We multiply by two. So the number one looks like two over two. This is using the identity property of multiplication. Well, we're really just multiplying this fraction or this ratio one to five by one. It stays the same. It may look different when we're done, but it stays the same. So if the ratio is one to five for frogs to cats, and we know that there are two frogs in the entire pet store, that we can figure out how many cats there are by using this ratio. If there's double the number of frogs than what's listed in the ratio, then there must be double the number of cats. So we know that five times two means that there are actually 10 cats in the pet store. So this is just using ratios and equivalent ratios. Thank you for watching.